Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to seed your initial sort order for the records in your table, any table, in Microsoft Access. What does that mean? Well, you want to add a custom sort order field so you can order these guys in any way that you want to, right? By hand. Well, you got to start that numbering somewhere. Instead of sitting here typing in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, I'm going to show you how to do it with a query. Why are we doing this? Well, in the last couple of videos earlier this week, I showed you how to make a form where you can make a couple buttons here to move items up and down in a list. And this involves having a sort order field stored in that table. Okay, and if you only got four items, it's no big deal. Just type in 0, 1, 2, 3. Right, and you'll get your initial sorting, and then you click the up and down buttons to move the items up and down. If you want to learn more about this, go watch this video here. Start with part one. There's a link for part one. In part one, we just use a value list list box, right? These records here are not actually bound to a table, they're right in the list box. That's the easy one. But then in part two, we move to a list that's bound to a table. So these are actually records in a table. And in this video, I show you how to set up the sort order and we just type them in and I tell you in the video, well, okay, if you got thousands of records, you don't want to sit here and type them all in, right? If you got an existing list of, let's say, 6,000 customers, you don't want to have to type them all in. So how can we have a query fill those sequential numbers in for us? Well, that's what we're going to learn how to do in today's class. Now go watch these list box move item videos if you want to. You don't have to. And I consider this an expert level video, which means we're not going to need any VBA programming. We can do this without VBA code, although later on in the extended cut for the members, I'm going to show you a better way to do this with some VBA code. But generally, you can do this with just queries and functions. So I call it an expert video because it's, it's beyond the basics, but you don't have to quite know how to program. You will need to know, however, what update queries are. So if you've never used an update query before, go watch this video. And you need to know what decount is the decount function. We use it to count records based on whatever criteria we specify. If you don't use, if you've never used decount before, go watch this video first. It's a relative of DLOOKUP, but go watch this video if you don't need, know how to use decount. Go, go watch it, go on, get out of here, go. And then come on back. Okay, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And in here, I've got a customer list. I got a bunch of customers, 33 of them. Let's pretend I got 33,000 and I wanna add a custom sort order. Right, I want to be able to change the order manually in which these guys are sorted. Okay, so not by ID, not by name, not by email, but I want a manual sort order. That's what the previous couple of videos were talking about. So let's go to design view here and let's add a sort order field to our table. Sort order, and that will be a number. All right, default value is zero. That's fine. All right, save it, close it. And if you open it up and take a look at it, you got a blank field there. Right, let's bring it to the front of the table. Where are you? There you are. Click, click and drag, slide it over here right after the customer ID. Blank, that's fine. All right, save it, close it. Let's create a query, create query design. Bring in your customer table. All right. Now let's take a look at the customer ID. Let's bring in that sort order, which is blank. And let's make a new field over here. We'll call it X. Let me close this. We don't need that. All right, I'm gonna zoom in here, Shift F2, just so you can see this better. Whoop, my zoom box is gigantic. Let me resize this. There we go. Make a new field called X. Now here's where we're gonna use our decount function. X is gonna be decount. I want to count how many records have an ID, have a customer ID lower than the current record. And that should tell me its position in the pecking order, right? So decount, what's the field? Count customer, cut. Uh, I can't type today. Customer ID, comma, from what table? Customer T. What's my criteria? Where the customer ID is less than and customer ID. Okay, that's going to take the current customer ID in the record that I'm on, one, two, three, whatever, put that inside of here. Okay, and then my, my customer, the, my, com my complete code is going to look like this. For that line, it's going to be give me how many count how many customer IDs from customer table are less than customer ID is less than three, in which case you should get a two. OK, but I'm going to put that customer ID outside the string. So it looks like that. So this gets evaluated first. OK, then this whole thing gets evaluated and that gets assigned to X. 
Okay, and if I run this now, there you go. There's your X value, right? How many customer IDs are less than one? None of them, zero. How many customer IDs are less than two? Just one, and so on. So there's your initial sort order right there, okay? Now, all I gotta do is take that value and stick it in sort order. How do we update the value of a field? Well, we do that with an update query. So we're just gonna change this to an update query, okay? We don't need customer ID for that, get rid of that. And I'm gonna take this calculation right here, everything from the decount afterwards, we're just gonna cut that out and put it in the clipboard. Control X, all right, and then get rid of that, we don't need it. Okay, now we're gonna switch this to an update query and for the update to field, slide this over, update to, paste in that value right there. In other words, we're saying run this and for each sort order, set it equal to whatever that value comes out to be. All right, let's save this as my renumber customer queue. Okay, a little update query right there and go ahead and run it. Nothing appears to happen. I have my warning messages turned off. You might get a warning message that says, you know, you're about to update 33 records or whatever. Okay, but now we can close this and let's take a look at our customer table. Oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? Now you got your custom sort order starting with zero. You want to start with one, you can start with one if you want to, but I used zero in the other videos, so I figured I'd stay consistent. Okay, and now you can use this to feed a list box like we did in the previous videos. Now, keep in mind this method is notoriously slow if you've got lots and lots of records. Update queries, well, queries in general, I try to avoid putting domain functions in here, dcount, dlookup, dmax, dmin, any kind of aggregate functions. All right, because they will run slow because this has to evaluate for each record in this table. It's got to count all the other records. Now, in this case, it's only 33 times. But if you've got 100,000 records in here, this is going to take a while to run. Now, if you're only initially seeding your values and you only got to do it one time, don't worry about it. Just do it once, let it be done, and it's over. But if there's something you have to do on a regular basis, you might want a more efficient method of doing this, of renumbering your records. And that's what I'm going to cover in the extended cut. All right, in the extended cut for the members, we're going to use a record set loop in some VBA with a little counter, and we're just going to run through the records real fast and auto number them. And with this, with this method, it's much, much easier to sort these differently. So if you want to initially sort these based on, you know, last name, first name, email address, date they were added, whatever, it's easier to add a sort with this method. You have to be careful sorting the records if you're just doing it with the query like I just showed you. Because if you got duplicates in there, you're going to mess up your count. If you got two William Rikers, for example, this, their number might be the same. So you got to watch it out. But in the method that I'm going to show in the extended cut, you won't, you won't have that problem. All right, silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos and gold members can download these databases and stuff. So there's lots and lots of reasons to join today. Now, also a couple other things. What happens when you add a new customer? If you want to keep these numbers going, I've got another video that shows you how to update that record number. So the last item that gets added, it automatically puts the next record number in. Go watch this video. And I've also got this video on sequential numbering, which you can use. This is good for things like uh, check numbers, where you might start it out at like 1001. And you want to make sure that the next one is just one more than the largest one in the table. So it doesn't necessarily start from zero or start from one. It starts from whatever the, the last largest one is. This one uses Dmax, a slightly different method. There's lots and lots of different ways to do this stuff, people. I just show you the different Legos. You can put them together however you want. And if you like this stuff, if you like learning with me, come check out my lessons. I got tons of free beginner lessons on my website. Uh, I got expert, advanced developer lessons, you name it. Any, any skill level, I got lessons for you. So come and check it out. You'll find links down below. But that's going to do it. There is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, people. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. 
But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject, and I cover Lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page 
that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.